Okay, so welcome back. Uh, in the previous video, we talked about uh, pulse width modulation. What is it and what's it used for? And about a year ago or something like that, I did a video talking about using pulse width modulation in a solar inverter and some of the details of that, if you want to get into that. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about generating pulse width modulated waveforms very simply using a Raspberry Pi and using Python on the uh, Raspberry Pi um, operating system, generating some Python code and uh, sending out from the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to be able to have the user specify what, what duty cycle they want and it will automatically generate the waveform. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to generate a pulse width modulated waveform using the Raspberry Pi. And you can see I've got on my oscilloscope the uh, PWM signal generated from the Raspberry Pi. And here is the Raspberry Pi. I've got a uh, Raspberry Pi 3B. And here's the GPIO pins. And if you count, you can see I've got um, jumpers on pins 9 and 11. And I've got a black jumper on pin 9 and a red jumper on pin 11. And I'm bringing those jumpers over to a simple breadboard and then I'm running them out to the oscilloscope probe and into my oscilloscope. Now what we're going to do is we're going to generate that signal using a Python program. And here is the program I'm going to write. I'm going to show you how to write it. And that's basically going to be made in Genie, which is a software editor that kind of defaults on Raspberry Pi. And it's, it's a few lines of code, and basically what it does is it allows you to input the duty cycle, uh, and it will change the duty cycle and then give you another opportunity, and it will continuously give you an opportunity to change the duty cycle in real time. So it's pretty straightforward, a, a simple Python code. So let's get into how you write the code. Okay, so first I'm going to show you how to start up Genie, G-E-A-N-Y, which is the software editor in, uh, on the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to um, start a new Python uh, file. So we go up here to the top left, File, New, with Template. Scroll down to the main.py, and it will give you a blank um, set of code here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select everything and delete and start from scratch. Now uh, I'm going to do the I'm going to do the uh, text editing on my other computer. So basically, all you're going to do is you're going to copy and paste what I do on the other computer in Notepad and put it here. Okay, so here we are in, I'm using Notepad++, you can use whatever you want to make a Python file. And um, what we're going to do is we are going to send a PWM signal to a pin on the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B. And here is the pinout um, numbers for each of the uh, GPIO pins. And we're going to use 9 and 11. You can see the numbers of the board pins are 1, 2 across the top, then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you can see all the odd ones are down the left side and all the evens are on the right side. And if you go down to pin 9, you can see that's a ground. And pin 11 is GPIO 0. So it's the first GPIO. So we're going to use 11 to send the signal out and 9 as ground, okay? So um, here is the code, and I'll step through the code. You can pause and uh, copy it if you want. It's fairly, fairly simple, but I'll explain what each line is. The first one, you import the library, the GPIO library for the Raspberry Pi, and we're just going to name it GPIO, all right? So import rpi.gpio as GPIO. Now we have to set the mode, and that's basically saying that we want them to use these board numbers of the pins. There are other versions of the numbers, but we're going to use the pin numbers so we have a direct connection to the hardware. All right. So we're going to say set mode, gpi.set mode as gpi.board. 
So use the board numbers. And then gpio.setup, and this is saying we're going to take pin 11 and send that, use that as an output, a GPIO output, all right? So now we're all set to send a signal to a, send a PWM to pin 11 as an output. Um, now we're going to name this um, variable uh, gpio.pwm. So it's telling it to send a PWM to pin 11 with a frequency of 100 hertz. So gpio.pwm 11, pin 11, comma, 100 hertz. And then we're going to start it using the mypwm.start and use a 50% duty cycle, all right? So now we've just sent out a 50% duty cycle at 100 hertz to pin 11, all right? Now we're going to define a variable, a Boolean, called stop it as false, which will allow the user to stop the uh, PWM. Now we're going to use a while loop, a, uh, an infinite while loop, to allow the user to change the duty cycle. So the while loop is while stop it is not equal to true, and then a colon, and keep in mind with Python, one of the reasons I despise Python is you use the uh, indents. If you don't have the indents, it's not going to work. So you've got to have, under the while loop, you've got to have the indented lines under that um, loop. And don't forget the colon. You've got to have the colon to define the steps. Again, I just, I hate Python, so... Um, forgive if this is not perfect code, I do whatever I can do to get by and then move back to C Sharp or C++. So anyway, um, we're defining a value called duty cycle, which is the result of an input request. So I've got an input, and what it does, it prints out enter duty cycle, one to quit, and takes the user entered value and assigns it to duty cycle. Now, that's supposed to be a string, but in this case, for some reason, it works fine as an integer, and I'm not sure what's going on. You don't have to define this duty cycle as an integer. Um, you know, you read the documentation and you need, it's, it's defaulted to a string. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. I just kind of give up. It's a pain. But anyway, assign duty cycle to this. And if duty cycle equals one, in other words, we said hit one to quit. And if it, it's a one, the, if, they, if you enter one, then you set the variable, the Boolean stop it equals to true. And then the next time through, you'll just go through and end. You'll do a cleanup, which cleans up all the uh, IO pins to their default state. And then prints out a, okay, bye-bye when you're done. If it's not, if it's a legitimate number uh, between, you know, more than one and less than 100, um, it will go through and do my PWM, and it will use a change duty cycle function to change it to this new duty cycle that the user just input, okay? Now this, you have to, I, I, I change this to an integer. Um, I, do, I um, assigned it as an integer. I don't know. I'm, it's all confusing. But anyway, this seems to work. So I assign it as an integer, and it will change the duty cycle to whatever number you put in. I'll go back and do it again. All right? So that's basically it. Um, that's the code. It goes through and, and gives you an infinite loop where you can keep entering a new duty cycle. And if you hit a 1, it will jump out, do a cleanup, and then you're done. So there you go. You basically just run the code. And um, it asks you uh, what duty cycle do you want. So I'm going to, it starts out with a 50% duty cycle. So I'm going to enter 10 and it goes down to 10. And then it's going to ask me again. I put in 30. I can put in 90. Um, and that's about it. And when I hit one, it will quit and it will um, uh, clear everything back to defaults. So that's it. Hope this helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.